This is the Youth Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumble, day 332. Do you ever feel uninspired and unmotivated to do God's will? Well, all of us do at some point. We can get low, we can get down, and we can be challenged so much that we stop doing what God has asked us to do. And in today's devotion, How to Be Inspired, we see in today's passages that we can be inspired by great people of faith, the men and women that are hugely inspiring, challenging, and motivational. So if you want to be inspired, this is the episode for you. In successive weeks at HTP, I interviewed two people of courage and faith. One, Ben Freeth, inspired by his faith in Jesus Christ, had taken a courageous stance against the unjust regime in Zimbabwe. As a result, he was beaten, tortured, and forced to watch his elderly mother-in-law and father-in-law undergo torture, from which the latter eventually died. Yet in the midst of his suffering, he chose to love and bless the torturers. The second was a pastor from one of the 60 countries around the world where physical persecution of Christians still takes place. He'd been imprisoned and at one stage sentenced to death for no other reason than his faith in Jesus Christ. Yet in the face of extreme suffering, He refused to deny his faith. The lives of men and women like this are hugely inspiring, challenging and motivational. From Proverbs 29 When the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. By justice, a king gives a country stability, but those who are greedy for bribes tear it down. The righteous care about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no such concern. Inspirational Champions of Justice I'm inspired by the examples of churches, individuals and organisations that care deeply about justice for the poor. There is so much in the Bible about issues of poverty and justice. The Poverty and Justice Bible highlights over 2,000 verses that wake us up to these issues. Justice really matters. By justice, a king gives a country stability, but one who is greedy for bribes tears it down. It's terrible to live in a place where bribery of judges and politicians is normal. A leader of good judgment gives stability. An exploiting leader leaves a trail of waste. No justice system is perfect. However, it's a privilege to live in a country that has a good justice system. When the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. In other words, when good people run things, everyone is glad. But when the ruler is bad, everyone groans. The righteous person has a clear conscience and can sing and be glad, whereas an evil person is snared by their own sin. Caring about justice for the poor is the mark of a righteous life. The good-hearted understand what it's like to be poor. The hard-hearted haven't the faintest idea. Lord, help us to make a real difference to this world in seeking to bring justice to the poor, the homeless, the prisoners and the hungry. New Testament from 2 Peter 2 But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. For if God did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, if this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the flesh and despise authority. With eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They seduce the unstable. They are experts in greed. They have left the straight way. These people are springs without water and mists driven by a storm. For they mouth empty, boastful words, and by appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh, they entice people, 
who are just escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, while they themselves are slaves of depravity. For people are slaves to whatever has mastered them. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, and are again entangled in it and are overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. Inspirational, Godly Lives I am so thankful for the examples of those around us today, like Bishop Sandy Miller, Cardinal Raniero Cantalamessa, and many lesser-known others who inspire us by their example and godliness. The New Testament warns about deceptive and potentially dangerous cult leaders who secretly introduce destructive heresies. In very recent times, one such cult called Sinjongji tried to infiltrate churches in London and around the world, posing as a Bible study for new believers. The leaders of this Bible study teach their followers to lie and deceive. This chapter is a strongly worded attack on lying prophets and immoral teachers. Peter contrasts the lives of Noah and Lot with the false teachers. Noah, the sole voice of righteousness, lived among ungodly people and was a preacher of righteousness. Lot also was a good man. He was a righteous man who was distressed by the filthy lives of the lawless. Peter holds out Noah and Lot as examples to those to whom he is writing, as they contend with false teachers who introduce destructive heresies and follow shameful ways that bring the way of truth into disrepute. These false teachers are not simply other Christian leaders with whom Peter disagrees. Their lives and teachings are at complete odds with the Christian faith. With eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They have left the straight way. They appeal to the lustful desires of sinful human nature. They promise freedom while they themselves are slaves of depravity. For people are slaves to whatever has mastered them. The things that Peter describes here can be very tempting, which is why he's so concerned about these leaders. His descriptions of pleasure-seeking, sexual freedom and the pursuit of money all strike a chord today. The false teachers are slaves to these things, yet they entice others, especially new believers, into the same way of life, leading them astray by promising freedom. However, true freedom is only found in God's ways, not in any of these enticements that promise so much but actually result in emptiness. Those who pursue and recommend them are springs without water and mists driven by a storm. This is a terrible warning. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and are again entangled in it and overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then to turn their backs. Lord, the pull of the world is strong. Help me never to turn my back on you, my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Old Testament from Daniel 3 and 4 King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leapt to his feet in amazement and asked his advisers, Weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, your majesty. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent this angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command 
and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Inspirational faith and courage. I'm always inspired by people of courage and faith who refuse to be frightened or intimidated. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego are inspiring examples of absolute trust in God. They refuse to bow down and worship the image of gold in spite of the threat of being thrown into a fiery furnace. They were determined to do the right thing, however great the cost might be, because they believed in God and his power to vindicate them if he so desired. They said to the king, Your threat means nothing to us. If you throw us in the fire, the God we serve can rescue us from your roaring furnace and anything else you might cook up, O king. But even if he doesn't, it wouldn't make a bit of difference, O king. We still wouldn't serve your gods or worship the gold statue you set up. It would have been easy for Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego to have tried to find a way out. They could have sought to negotiate a settlement with Nebuchadnezzar that involved some compromise, but not too much. But they had complete confidence in the power of God to deliver them if he wanted to, and if he did not, they were still going to trust in him and obey him. This is an inspiring example. When faced with difficult decisions, ask as they did, what is the right thing to do? Then do it regardless of the consequences. Their absolute trust in God was a tremendous witness to Nebuchadnezzar. As he looks into the fiery furnace, he sees four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of God. Reading this through the lens of the New Testament, it's possible to see the fourth man as a vision of Jesus himself with them in their time of trial. They came out, not a hair singed, not a scorch mark on their clothes, not even the smell of fire on them. If you're facing trials in your life that might seem like the fiery furnace, you can be assured that Jesus is right there with you in whatever situation you are facing. Even Nebuchadnezzar himself is inspired by their example. A change of heart began in him as a result. However, it took a long time for God to get the message through to him. In spite of Daniel's example in chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar was not converted. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego's absolute trust in God had a big impact on him. However, his conversion was not complete. In chapter 4, we read of his remarkable testimony of how he did eventually come to acknowledge God. Giving a testimony brings great pleasure. It's my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. By this stage, his attitude had completely changed and the glory was all given to God. He begins by saying that in one sense, he had all he wanted. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at home in my palace, contented and prosperous. But underneath the prosperity and contentment, there was a deep fear. One of the main points of the book of Daniel is that God uses inspiring examples like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and their absolute trust in God to change a king's life. And as a result, to change a nation. Lord, help me to do the right thing, however great the cost appears to be. Thank you for inspiring examples of men and women who raise my sights and show me what is possible. Pepper adds, Proverbs 29 verse 7 says, The righteous care about the justice of the poor. When we visited Zimbabwe, I was inspired by the church there. It shines. We met many people who have taken up the plight of the poor and are trying to make a difference. Are there any injustices under my nose that God may want to draw to my attention? Let's pray. Jesus, fill me now with courage and faith to keep on going. Help me to stay motivated doing your works. In Jesus' name, amen.